porgs. There are species of sea-dwelling, beakless birds from the latest Star Wars movies, and this one was made with just paper, glue, and a knife. I've had so much fun making this, and it seems like nobody knows about papercraft, so I'd like to introduce you to the joy of spending all day long watching TV. Well, watching TV while carefully cutting and casually gluing together pieces of paper. I'm a firm believer that one does not need an excuse to spend all day long watching TV. But if you'd like to walk away from that day with a sense of accomplishment and a cool new piece of 3D art, I highly recommend Papercraft. Getting started with Papercraft is easy. It takes no artistic skill or creativity, and after you've been doing it for a while, it stops requiring any brain power at all. I've made this Porg, I've also made a Master Chief helmet from the Halo games, and I've made these cool little Star Wars guys. Today I'm going to show you the supplies, designs, process, and product. So what do you need to get started? First, you'll need either scissors or an X-Acto knife and a cutting pad. I'm sure you can make do with scissors, but it's going to be a lot easier to trace the shapes with a knife on a cutting pad. And I'm sure you'll probably get better results too. Next, you'll need some glue. Really any glue will work. I use the Elmer's glue you'd buy for elementary school. It works really well for sticking paper together. You have time to line things up before it dries, and it dries relatively quickly. And you get to enjoy peeling it off your fingers when you're done. Lastly, you'll need paper. You can use regular printer paper, but the results will be much better if you use a thick, sturdy paper. I bought a ream of printer-sized cardstock from Walmart for $6, and it's lasted me a long time. If you're going to be painting like I did for Master Chief here, or if the design is made to be printed on like these Star Wars figures, white cardstock will work great. For something big and colorful like this Porg, you'll want to buy some colored paper. I found these thick sheets of colored paper at Michael's for 79 cents each. It only took 4 or 5 sheets to make the Porg, and it was totally worth it for the ink savings and for how well it turned out. Right, so, on to the designs. Some are pretty simple, you can see this Darth Vader is just two pages, and I downloaded it for free from Cubefold Craft. The Porg, on the other hand, I'm unashamed to admit, I paid around $10 for this design. From Ikogami Shop. There are only a few people who create these designs, so I'm happy I could support the people doing the work. The way it works with most of these designs is that someone creates a 3D low-poly model and imports it into a program called Pepicura. If the shape is simple enough, Pepicura can unfold it into 2D shapes and arrange them onto pieces of paper to be printed out. Then the document can be uploaded online as a PDF for someone like me to find and assemble. So what's the process for assembly? I'm sure you can do whatever you want, but here's what I like to do. Step 1. Print out the designs. This porg was 13 pages. I use cheap printer paper because I'm only printing out the design to transfer onto the colored paper. Step 2. Cut out the shapes. I cut out the design and taped the individual shapes onto the colored paper for the final product. For the angular low poly look, you'll want to score the fold lines by going over them with a pen or a dull knife. Then I cut out the shape using the X-Acto knife and the cutting pad. Step 3 is folding and marking. Once I've got a piece cut out, I'll pre-fold it based on what the design says. An even dashed line like this denotes a mountain fold, and an uneven dashed line like this denotes a valley fold. I'll also use this time to mark the pieces to know what goes where. There's going to be a number on each edge, and every edge will have a matching tab with the same number. This can be on the same shape or on a different one, but the matching numbers denote eventually what will be glued together. I like to mark them in pens so it's easy to keep track. Just make sure to put your notes in a spot that won't be visible on the final product. Once you've got a few pieces with matching sides cut, you're ready for step four, glue. All you have to do is find a tab and edge with the same number, give it a drop of glue, and hold them together for a few seconds. You can cut out a few, then glue a few, or cut them all, then glue them all, whatever works for you. For me, gluing's my favorite part, so I always do that as soon as I have two matching pieces ready. I also like to have one big piece and stick more and more onto it, but you can do it in separate parts and then join them together. After repeating these steps a bunch of times, eventually you'll have a porg, like this. Then you can walk away with a new friend, a sense of accomplishment, and a sense of belonging among the very few people that have discovered this rare and rewarding 21st century art form. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to papercraft. 
I'd love to answer any questions if you leave them in the comments. So thank you for watching and don't forget to stay bland.